Hi, everyone. Happy Thursday. Welcome to our sustainability webinar. As you are being let into the webinar room here, go ahead and use the chat. Tell us where you're joining us from. I see some familiar names already. Would love to hear where you're from, what hospital you're with, any specific questions you have about sustaining your California Bridge program. We'll get started here in just about a minute. I hope everyone is has cleaned up from the storms that we had all over the state earlier this week and that things are getting back to normal. Hi, Rebecca, nice to see you this morning. Give folks another minute to log on here. As you're logging on, go ahead and tell us where you're from, what hospital. We'd love to know who we have on the call here. Wonderful, we have ED directors in the house, navigators in the house. Some doctors, beautiful. Hi, Brenna, nice to see you. Wonderful, all right, everyone. So go ahead and share your name and what hospital you're from in the chat. And just so everybody knows up front, we are going to send all the resources that we talk about in this call today out in a post webinar email. Those usually go out between about one and two business days after the webinar. So you do not need to ask, can I have this? Yes, you can have it. We are going to send everything out. So why are we here today? We are here today because at California Bridge, we have been fortunate enough to have startup funding to launch ED-based MAT programs and behavioral health navigators at 278 hospitals and counting. But we know that ultimately the navigator needs to be a permanent position that is not contingent on grant funds renewing over and over again. So when this current grant funding ends, the programs, your program, if you're on this webinar, is going to need to transition to a different funding source or different funding sources. What does that mean? What are other funding sources besides grants? Well, here at California Bridge, we have left no stone unturned to figure out what kind of finance options exist for navigators and other financing options to sustain your hospital-based MAT program. We're working on community health worker billing options. We are also exploring how health plans and counties can be engaged. Finally, we are looking into other funding opportunities at the state level to identify how we can keep these programs going. So that's what we're doing over here. We're busy, but we're not gonna talk about us today. Today, we're going to talk about what you, people working at hospitals can do internally to understand the value of your navigator and create the case to make it a permanent position at your hospital. So there's a couple options here. One is that the hospital thinks the program is so wonderful and so valuable that they just continue it as part of their ongoing hospital billing, hospital budget. We'll be talking about that today. There are also some billing options to bring in revenue and ways that you can engage your county and the health plans operating in your county to support the program. So if you're a navigator and you're sitting on this webinar feeling overwhelmed, I just started my job. I have so many patients to see. I am spending so much time on community outreach. How am I ever going to find this data? We understand this is overwhelming. Same, if you're a clinician, maybe you work at multiple hospitals, maybe you also are dealing with wait times and burnout and staffing challenges. This might be overwhelming to you too. We understand. Our goal today is to present you with a variety of options, ideas, and tools and help you understand which one or two might be best based on your role and your capacity. So first today, we're going to hear from Dr. Amy Mullen. She is a co-principal investigator and co-founder of California Bridge, as well as a faculty emergency medicine physician at UC Davis. Amy is going to talk about how the navigator addresses many of those challenges that I just named that you might be facing as a result of substance use disorder presenting in your hospital. Amy's well qualified to speak on this topic because she had one of the original navigators who helped us build this model at UC Davis. Not only has that person's position been made permanent, but they actually have an entire team of navigators to provide coverage as much as needed within their busy academic medical center. Next, we're going to hear from Melissa Spiner, California Bridges Data and Evaluation Program Director. Melissa has been digging through every drop of data you have ever shared with us at California Bridge to understand how to tell the best story possible for your hospital. Again, as a reminder, every tool we share today is going to be available to you in a post-event email and is also on the California Bridge website. So we're here to help. Amy, tell us about the work you've been doing. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and we're going to go through 
some slides that California Bridge have put together that really are gonna be for you to use when talking to your hospital about the importance and success of your program. Please go ahead and put questions in the chat because I want this to be accessible and usable for you. Um, and we will get to them at the end. So really this is, this is a set of information about California Bridge and the impact on hospitals. And the goal here is for you to have all the tools that you need to engage your hospital to talk about the impact on providing high quality cost-effective care for hospitalized patients. This will hopefully engage your hospital in helping you to explore some of those billing options and partnerships with plans and counties that can really help to benefit your program and really ultimately patients in the community. So moving forward, this is all available on our website and will be sent out to you. So starting in, why do we do this work in hospitals and emergency departments? And this is telling the story that one in 11 emergency department visits are made by adults with substance use disorders. 11% of all hospitalized patients have a substance use disorder and without our program often go unrecognized and undertreated. And as a consequence of our inability to provide treatment for patients with substance use disorder, they often have longer lengths of stay and experience higher rates of readmission. And as we've all seen, patients with untreated withdrawal often increase stress and anxiety for the patients, for staff, and that can lead to unnecessary conflict Frustration when staff do not feel like they have adequate resources to meet the needs of patients. And we think a lot of this can be addressed when we are able to provide treatment for withdrawal and substance use disorders for hospitalized patients. This is really the background of the environment that we're all practicing in and recognizing that ED visits for Opioids for non-fatal overdose have really increased along with the incidence of opioid use disorder and the proliferation of fentanyl in our communities. And this is old data. So I think that you are all experiencing this firsthand and can use this data to help communicate to your hospital leadership. And this is California specific. And then to recognize, you know, overdose, can be a hospital acquired condition. This is data looking at overdose deaths. And there is a spike in overdose deaths in the 28 days after hospitalization. So the same way that we think about hospital acquired conditions, line infections, um, catheter associated urinary tract infections, and the hospital has a role in causing harm, hospitalization is associated with overdose deaths. And you can think of different mechanisms for that. There's a loss of tolerance during an inpatient stay. And so there's really a, a role that there is it, that hospitals need to intervene to help patients avoid overdose and overdose death post-discharge. The good news is we have treatment that works. And as you all know, Providing treatments in emergency departments and hospitals is cost effective um, by increasing resources, such as the substance use navigator team, we can implement treatment for patients in the ED and in the hospital in a way that is cost effective. And we've shown this throughout our California Bridge program, treating opioid use disorder in hospitals. And here's basically our model which you are all familiar with, the clinical champion starts treatment on demand and the navigator role is there to provide support, motivational, energy, motivational interviewing, and really the linkage to ongoing support. And this is just a way for you to communicate what the model looks like in your hospital and what you're actually doing. And then highlights the key role of the navigator in being able to provide that needed bridge from clinical treatment to evidence-based outpatient treatment and helping them to engage in their long-term recovery. Buprenorphine saves lives. We all know this. Um, this is data that looks at mortality of people in treatment and not in treatment. And this is something we all know that people who 
have opioid use disorder who are not treated have a high risk of death. But people who are receiving treatment, and sometimes that's as easy as a prescription for buprenorphine, lower their mortality rate closer to the general population. And I think there's this myth of um, treatment resistance for people with opioid use disorder. You hear this a lot. Um, but if we think about substance use disorder as a chronic illness, and you'll often hear people say that there's non-compliance for patients with substance use disorder. And I think there's an over um, emphasis on compliance when recognizing that we all struggle to take medications for chronic illness and that individuals with substance use disorder are no different than other patients that we treat with chronic illness, hypertension, asthma, and diabetes. And frequently the compliance rates or people who are retained in treatment at one year for those with substance use disorder is comparable to patients with diabetes, hypertension, and asthma. And so really this is just a reflection of individuals with chronic illness and our ability to retain them in treatment. And these statistics are really just to help you have tools to communicate to your hospital and your colleagues why treating substance use disorder in the general context of medical care is so important and really to dispel some of those myths that are common around individuals with substance use disorder and to really highlight how effective treatment actually is when we are able to offer it to patients at that time of need and to integrate it into their regular medical care during their emergency department and hospital visit. And now we're gonna talk about really where the money meets the road, which is your return on the investment and how this benefits your hospital and their metrics. And we're gonna look at four things here, really how treating patients with substance use disorder, helping to manage their withdrawal symptoms and helping them to receive the medical care that will improve outcomes actually improves hospital workflow, can reduce utilization and costs, and to look at some of the performance metrics that we're looking at for our health plans and how it can really help providers and staff. Because I think we all share a goal of wanting to help. And what is most frustrating when you are taking care of a patient when you don't have the resources to help them that can be very frustrating as a provider. And so what we can do when we implement a California Bridge program is give staff and providers the resources to meet patient needs, and that will improve provider satisfaction. So how do we improve hospital workflow? As we mentioned, patients with untreated substance use disorder who have untreated withdrawal have longer length of stay. But amazingly, when we treat substance use disorder and provide resources such as case management and substance use navigators, we're able to reduce the hospital length of stay. So these are two studies that looked at the impact of navigators and case management on hospitalized patients. And that showed a 39% reduction in combined ED and inpatient length of stay over the course of a year, which calculated out to 178 fewer patient days in the hospital. So really by providing evidence-based treatment, we improve patient outcomes, but also hospital outcomes, and we're able to lower the ED and hospital utilization. Other studies looking at, oh, sorry. Um, this is another study looking at specifically readmissions. So this is looking at the time between initial admission and readmissions. And what you'll see is that by addressing substance use disorder, particularly for this study with opioid use disorder, they can decrease the length of stay by one to two days, decrease against medical advice, discharges, decrease readmission, and when patients are readmitted, they're less likely to be admitted to the ICU. So again, by providing resources, linkages to outpatient treatment, 
we're able to better engage patients in their own care, which we see with decreased AMA discharges, and better link them to outpatient treatment can avoid readmissions and even ICU admissions. And how does this all come together to reduce hospital costs? So we have seen decreased 20% decrease in readmissions, decrease in ED utilization, and decreased cost. So these are two studies looking at patient navigation for patients with co-occurring substance use disorder and calculated almost $18,000 of savings per patient um, for engagement cost of $343. So based on these two studies, we saw a bit large return on investment for that navigator use. And how are we improving performance metrics? So one of the things that California has prioritized because California is recognizing the importance of behavioral illness, mental illness and substance use disorder, they have incentivized our managed care plans to ensure that patients get follow-up after an ED visit for substance use disorder. And when we have navigators, we're able to help link patients to outpatient treatment and improve those follow-up rates. So the, the health plans who are covering the patients in your community are incentivized to make sure that this works. So that's another avenue for you and your hospital leadership to partner with your health plans to see how you can come together to support substance use navigators and improve patient, patient follow-up and then really improve these metrics that the the hospital, sorry, the health plans are incentivized. So working with your health plans will help their metrics by supporting the substance use navigator. And this is just one of those ways when you talk to your hospital leadership to say, hey, how can we connect to our managed care plan? Because they're incentivized to do this too. We're helping with those patient metrics. And this is really a, another study that's from our California Bridge program, looking at the Alameda Health System in Oakland. And they compared patients in the ED with substance use disorder who met with a navigator versus patients who did not. And they really could see in this study the difference that interacting with a navigator made. That navigator's increased follow-up after an ED visit for substance use disorder at 30 days post-discharge, patients who were seen by a navigator in the emergency department, 50% of them were engaged in follow-up versus 16, which is a really big number. So we can really move the needle on that metric for our health plans by engaging with patients in the emergency department with a substance use navigator. So what this comes out to is patients were two to three times more likely to still be in treatment at 30 days when they were seen by a navigator in the emergency department. So that metric that the health plans have prioritized, we can make a big difference on by having, emerg by having substance use navigators in the emergency department. And how can we really make a difference? Here, I think that as healthcare providers, what we really want to do is help patients. And when we have the tools to help patients recover and to get into treatment, it makes our job so much easier. And so these are some ways that having substance use navigators can really help increase staff satisfaction. It's really difficult and frustrating to see patients suffering and not have the resources to help them and having substance use navigators helping hospitalized patients really helps staff, nurses, clerks, techs, everyone feel like they can make a difference for that patient and it really can improve staff morale. So here at California Bridge, our goal is that everyone has access to high quality addiction treatment in all emergency departments and hospitalized by, by 2025, and we're pretty close. Um, but we wanna be here to help you to support your program so that you can continue to provide that 24 access to high quality treatment. Um, and here is where we are 
really been able to increase the number of hospitals that we're working with. But the goal is to have a permanent navigator position to continue to be able to provide that life-saving treatment to all of our patients and be that resource for our community to get folks into treatment. So this is really your goal when you're using this slide deck, talking about the impact of the navigator on your hospital and on people in your community is to make that navigator position permanent and a part of what the regular operation of a hospital is. I'm going to turn it back over to you, to Elizabeth, so that we can talk about some more of the resources that we have at California Bridge. Thanks, everyone. And please, there'll be time for questions at the end. Go ahead, put them in the chat or just jot them down. And we'll get to them. Thank you, Amy. I love that last slide about the permanent navigator being an important part of the hospital. Turning this presentation over now to Melissa Spiner, our data and evaluation director, who is going to talk to you about how you can use what you already know to support your program. So the good news is we are about to tell you how to use the data you already have to tell your story. Thanks, Melissa. All right, yes. Yeah. So in this next part, I'm gonna show you all how to build a custom return on investment report or ROI report. And it's gonna be using this new tool that we've created and we are really excited to debut today. So in a nutshell, it's called the return on investment template or the ROI template. And it's a template that you can use. You're gonna put some of your own data in it and it's gonna plug and chug and it's gonna pop out a snapshot of what's happening at your hospital. It's pretty cool. So using this, anyone, you know, you can take your own patient data and it's going to show you the specific and actual impact that your, your navigator had at your hospital. The end product is going to look a little bit like what you see on the screen now. So on the right side of your screen, you see it's a one page report that it's generating. And this is something that you can use. You can use it to review with your team. You can have a discussion. You can send it around, you can pop it in a slide to present. Um, lots of ways to share this at the end. And like I said, it's specific to your hospital. And the thing that it's really providing, it's a really easy and really clear way of seeing the impact that the navigator is having at your site and all the amazing work that they're doing. So before we go further, I just wanna acknowledge, I know there's people on this webinar today uh, we're really lucky to have a, a big group with lots of different roles in the hospital. So I want to emphasize that like this is intended for any one specific person or any one specific role. This is something that anyone could go to our website, they could download the instructions, and they could try it out. It doesn't matter if you're a clinician or if you're a navigator, if you're a supervisor, even the CEO. Uh, you can use this and it can give you a really effective way of understanding the value that the navigator is bringing to your hospital. So we're going to talk about, you know, what it is today and how to use it. Um, before I go too much into how to use it, there's a couple of things that I want to actually highlight here. I want to get you excited about the amazing you know, content that this is able to deliver. So let's take a closer look and I'm going to... Um, call attention to a couple of things here that you see on the final report. So again, one thing I think is really great is this blue box. It's making it really clear what's happening inside your own four walls, the amazing work that your navigator is doing. You see in this example, Grace Loan Memorial Hospital it has the hospital name, but your hospital name would be there. Um, I do hope there's some Grey's Anatomy fans in the audience today because I'm going to use that example a lot. But the report would have your hospital name and then all the benefits that you see here, the reduced ED visits and time in the hospital. Again, these are gonna be calculated automatically from the data that you provide on your own patients. And so it's gonna reflect what's actually happened at your hospital because of your navigator. So really specific to um, reality and your site. The other thing that I really love about this tool I love to say it is small and mighty. So we know, you know, everyone is really busy. There's a lot of things going on at the hospital and you all have limited time and that's okay. 
The strength of this tool is it's providing a snapshot. It's meant to be used with anywhere between one and five patients. That should be something that's a little bit more realistic, right, to, to look at. Um, so trying to make it easy to use and, and just really realistic for people to actually take advantage of. The tool, it's meant to work with just a handful of patients, but still provide insight that's going to be really valuable into what's happening. I think just even looking at one patient can provide some really important information about how your navigator is impacting your hospital as a whole. And the last thing I want to call out here is at the bottom of every report, you're going to see a very specific message that has already popped up on your screen before, just to make it very clear. The reason that we're here today, you know, our end goal, the reason we're having this conversation is to call attention to the fact that navigators were funded with startup funding. And if hospitals want to continue to reap these benefits, it needs to be made a permanent position. So you're going to see that statement at the bottom of the report. Again, it's all about tying it back to showing the return on investment here. When I say investment, the investment is the navigator. It's making it a permanent position. And when I say return, it's all these amazing benefits and improvements that you'll see when you look at workflow, throughput, reductions in visits, um, and length of stay. A lot of, a lot of great benefits to be reaped there. And before we get in um, to how to use it, I just really like to, like, the way I think about this is your navigators are doing amazing work. They're helping patients um, every day. This is a way of translating those patient success stories into this return on investment case, into this ROI sort of lens to illustrate really clearly, really succinctly, all the other benefits that the navigator can bring to the hospital in addition to you know, improving patient care. There's a, there's a lot of value that they bring and we just wanna make sure that people are aware of it. Okay, so with that, if you're ready to see how it works, it, basically the way you'll start is you have to start by picking um, a couple of patients. Identify the patients that you wanna highlight using this tool. Again, between one and five patients, depending on what works best for you and you know, your um, situation. And you might be sitting here, you likely already have patients who are coming to mind that you would think to use this for. And we encourage you to pick those strong examples. Pick who's coming to mind. We're interested in seeing patients here where the navigator had a really positive impact on their care trajectory. And if, you know, whatever chance you do need a little bit of help or you need a little bit of inspiration, a tip I've heard is to ask the other ED staff around you. Ask the nurses that you work with, who comes to mind? Maybe they have a patient that stands out to them who used to come in really frequently, um, finally got connected to the navigator, finally got some of the help that they really needed, and then, you know, turn things around. That's going to be a great example to use this, this template with. Once you have your patients identified, then the next step is going to be to look at their chart, and you're going to collect some data on their hospital utilization. Specifically, you're going to look at how many ED visits they had, how many admissions that they had, and how many hours they spent in the hospital for each of those. And we're going to do that for a period before they saw the navigator and a period after they saw the navigator. This tool specifically, it's looking at the three months before and the three months after. And then here's where I think this new tool, this new template really shines, is that once you gather that data, you're going to input it in this it's, it looks just like this, and I'm going to show you a little bit more in a minute here. You're going to input it into this data collection worksheet. All you have to do is answer these questions um, about your patients. And once you do that, the tool is going to do a lot of the work for you. It's going to plug and chug. Um, it's going to magically calculate some things behind the scene. And then the report that you saw at the beginning, like that final report that it spits out, all of that's going to be updated automatically for you. It's going to have your hospital name and all the data um, automatically generated into that final report. So, so you, there's not like a whole lot of work that needs to be put into it. It's, it's really able to take care of a lot of that for you. And uh, we're actually going to do a demo 
I'm going to show you how it works. We're going to put together one right now uh, just to show you how easy it is. So I'm going over now into my spreadsheet, you know, application, and this is where the template exists. This is um, how it takes the data and turns it into something uh, really meaningful and useful here. And you see on my screen now, you should see it, uh, the report. It should look similar, but you see it says no data and you see some zeros and some weird kind of like error messages, right? Um, that is because we haven't put anything into it yet. So uh, that's where we're gonna start. And then I'm actually gonna go here at the bottom of the screen, you'll see there's a couple of tabs, right? Um, so I'm going to go to this tab number one here, and this is the data collection worksheet that I mentioned. This is where we put in our information. Um, so I'm going to pretend to be Dr. Miranda Bailey, and again, I work at Gray Sloan Memorial up in Seattle there, and I'm going to use this tool today to look at the impact from these two patients that I have in mind. Let's call patient A, Meredith. And so I talked with my team and we talked about Meredith and, you know, kind of who Meredith is as a, as a patient and what her care has looked like here. And we found that um, Meredith used to come in every couple of days, right? So, when I looked at the three months before she got connected with the navigator, I counted a total of 29 ED visits. And I will say, like a side note, this is, this is actually based off of a real example of um, someone from a hospital who helped us develop this tool. I'm not actually making that number up. Uh, so it's rooted in reality. Okay, so we looked at those 29 visits and on average, uh, they're a little over four hours um, on, on average. So when I found the total, it was a total of 130 hours spent in the ED. Meredith then was admitted once and spent a couple hours here in the inpatient, spent a couple hours in the hospital. Then she got connected with the navigator. The navigator great, gave her some really great resources got her into some follow-up care, helped with transportation, got her a cell phone, even all these great um, things that a navigator can do for a patient. And so we looked at what happened three months after that. And the three months after that, you know, Meredith still, she came in once in a while, she had a total of 12 visits and they were a little bit shorter, a little bit faster. It was a total of 30 hours and there were no, admissions and so I'm going to put zero and zero and that's that's largely you know that's largely the process that's largely it um I'm going to go ahead and put in some data here for my patient B I'm not going to walk through all the details here but I just want you to be able to see how it takes the data that I'm putting in now and we'll use it in the the final report later so I'll just pop in some of this that I have prepared and you'll see that this worksheet, there's a total of 10 questions, right? It's not super long. At the bottom, I'm also going to put in for some contextual information, uh, the number of patients that my navigator is seeing on average per month. So I know that, you know, my navigator sees about 25 patients per month and about half of them are getting referred to mental health or substance use disorder treatment um, for an outpatient setting. Okay, so I put it all in. Are you ready to see the results? I'm gonna go back to that third tab with the report. And now you can see it's all been populated for me. I now have this like lovely visual, right? Of what happened with these two patients before and after. I can see in this blue box, all the, the ways that, you know, by the navigator doing a great job providing really high quality care, all the ways that that improved efficiency in my hospital fewer ED visits, just like less time, freeing up space, allowing me to see more people in the hospital in general. So when I'm at this point, basically what would happen is you should look it over, make sure everything looks good, looks accurate. And then to turn it into that, that final report, you're literally just gonna go to file, save as a PDF. 
And then you have something that you can, again, take around and share out. Um, before we talk more about that, though, I want to show one more thing here, which is if you notice on the bottom of the, the tabs here, I skipped from step one to step three, right? There actually is a step in between. So if you remember in math class when you had to show your work, this is what this tab is. So this has all the like actual calculations and data that you put in, put into tables. And a cool thing here that I wanna highlight is that if you, for whatever reason, wanted to choose a different graph or show something a little bit different than what the default is in this report, you could actually just grab one of those and copy paste and, and swap it out. So it gives you a little bit even more ability to customize it beyond um, just the data that's being put in. Great. Okay, so we have our report. Let's go back here. And what happens next? So this is when you get to this report period and you have your report and you get to this step, um, this is this is sort of the most important part, right? It's time to share your results. If you did this exercise and, and you have some really promising results and um, exciting ways to show how the navigator has added this additional value to your hospital, make sure you're telling people about it. Make sure you're sharing this with others um, at your site. I like to think of this report, it can be a tool in your toolbox to talk about Bridge, to talk about the navigator, and how you know they benefit the hospital. It can be sort of an add-on to you know what we've already covered today. Um, that can make a really, really impactful you know impression when you look at it this way. So, when you're ready to get started, like I mentioned before, all of this is available on the website. You, um, there should be a link being dropped in the chat. This QR code will get you there as well. Um, it'll be shared in the follow-up email after we're done here today. But the link will take you to a set of instructions that will lead you through step-by-step, -step, just like I did today, um, on how to do this. And we're here to help if you have any questions or get you know, stumped along the way. But I really hope um, like a lot of you will take advantage of this really awesome new tool. Just go on the website, try it out. I'm, you know, I'm not making this up. I think it's really an amazing resource that, you know, we haven't always been able to offer. And it's a new way of looking at your bridge program. It's a new way of looking at your navigator, really specific through this lens, right? Really specific of what amazing benefits, returns are you getting in the hospital when you, when you invest in this position, when you invest in this role. I can truly see like the value that they bring in a new light. Great, with that, I'm gonna hand it back to Elizabeth. Thank you all for, for sitting with me that. Thank you, Melissa. I love this tool, but I don't have anybody to talk to about it. So how can we help you with this? I also want to offer for anybody who was watching this, who is the type of thinker who just needs to sit with these tools for a while and think about them and sort through them. It's a lot of information. We have individual coaching for you. So we recommend to contact us using the link in the chat. You can also contact info at cabridge.org. You also are welcome to reach out to me directly. If you have my email address, we can have that uh, in the chat as well. And we will get you to your hospital's team. So every hospital that is in participates in California Bridge has a clinical expert, a navigator expert, and a program staff member who is assigned to support you. So if you would like individualized assistance working with these tools and thinking about how your hospital's data can best tell the story, we are willing to work with you on that. We know that a critical access hospital operating in rural Eastern California might have a different story to tell than a hospital in downtown Los Angeles. That's obvious. So feel free to reach out to us and, and we will help you with that. Yeah, so um, to address this, and Amy, I wonder if you have anything to weigh in on here. Uh, participant says, I have to wait for my administrator to instruct me as to what to do with this tool. What can we do while we're waiting? What can we do <laughs> to encourage that administrator to help? 
Yeah, I think if you have a feeling it has something to do with knowing where they walk their dog. No, I I would say that we'd love to work with you ahead of time so that you are armed with all of the data. Um, we'd love to help you enter your data into these tools. So as soon as someone said, hey, we're interested, can you give me this information by close of business today? You are armed and ready with data from your hospital. Um, also would encourage you to kind of as a catalyst, you can download our slide set and say, hey, here's information on from California Bridge on the effectiveness of the program, would love to share with you and then send them the data from your hospital. Um, and then you can work together to determine what's the best use and watch the best audience. And, and even like, what is the best strategy for your hospital in terms of looking at billing, working with health plans, working with counties? I think there are a variety of different strategies and we really want to help you with it. Yeah. So one of my favorite things that I get to do in my job as clinical program director at California Bridge is help people who work at the same county in the same system and sometimes even in the same hospital talk to each other. So if you're wondering how you might engage your county or who you might talk to or whether anybody else in your region has had success, that's another thing we can help you to figure out. We have a pretty good lock on where support exists for these programs and where you might be able to tap into your leadership or your county or your health plan. Uh, so please feel free to reach out to us for that individualized coaching. So the question we're getting in the chat is I'd like to confirm, can any health system use this ROI or is this specific to California? That's a good question. Melissa, what do you think? It's a good question. For the tool that I just presented, if you put in data, it's going to pop out numbers for you. So in that way, you know, it's open season, you could use it. But I will say some of the talking points that are embedded in there are California specific. Um, so, you know, if you, when you go to use it, you make your copy that you're allowed to edit, you could always look at updating that for wherever your setting is, wherever you're, you're coming from. Great. Uh, yes, absolutely. So Kara, uh, the best way to get in contact with us is that um, info at cabridge.org. And then based on exactly what your question is, it'll go to Melissa or me or um, one of our clinical experts like Dr. Moulin or whoever, whoever you need. So yes, please reach out to us. Another, um, we, we love our support staff here, Aiden and Kaya, who read the info at cabridge.org. They're our ACE project coordinators. And after these webinars, we basically spend the rest of the day reading all the emails that you send us and getting everybody support. So uh, there are real live people behind that info at cabridge.org email. What other questions do folks have? We'll go ahead and wait a few minutes. Like I said, I personally am not a data whiz. I know how to read numbers on a spreadsheet. I don't really know what to do with them. So when I see tools like what Melissa shared, I definitely sometimes need to take a deep breath, go have another cup of coffee or take a walk and then come and sit down with it. So I really encourage everyone either pulling the links from the chat or maybe waiting until a quieter moment toward the end of your week if you're an administrator or uh, maybe when you've had a day off from work as a busy clinician, you can take a look at these tools and work through them uh, at, at your leisure and think about how to use these. And yeah, I really want to emphasize uh, the value of being prepared with this data. We often get requests from hospitals that they basically say, you know, can you help us tell our story? And we have an opportunity to present to our C-suite and we say, okay, well, when's your presentation? Let's, you know, take a few weeks to get prepared. And they say it's tomorrow or it's in two hours. So really this is a good thing to do now so that when you do have that opportunity to get those 10 minutes on that executive suite uh, presentation, you're ready, you know it, you know your numbers, like the back of your hand. I wanna, so a question coming in, yeah. Yeah, and I really want to thank you for bringing up the community health worker benefit. I think this is an excellent strategy that I'd love to see us take advantage of. Um, and even again, having using that community health worker benefit. So those of you who don't know about this, California approved reimbursement for community health workers. So this is an individual who would provide education, navigation, support for people with chronic illness. 
And really, substance use disorder is a chronic illness. So community health worker benefits could be used to support substance use navigators. And I think this is one of the things that you can talk to your hospital about and to see how that could potentially work with your hospital's Medi-Cal contracts. Um, and so I think that this is really one of the strategies out there that we want to help you use. Thank you for bringing it up. I would also love to hear what do you think we're missing? You know, if they're going through the slide deck, going through these tools, are there things that you think we are not talking about? Are there things that you think would help you? Um, resources that you'd like to see us put out there because we really want to make sure that this works. Um, and we want to really support you because we know that you're doing all of that really important work of helping people in your community. Um, we do have some information on community health worker benefits that we, I think, can send out. Elizabeth, I can send that to you. Um, and I think that's another important avenue for your hospital to look at, see what billing options that they can take advantage of with their Medi-Cal contracts. Yeah, thanks, Amy. And just to answer a few of these questions that are coming in uh, verbally in addition to the chat, so somebody asked about whether we share funding opportunities for OUD and SUD work, and our newsletter does have a funding uh, section to it. The newsletter goes out the first week of every month, usually toward the end of the first week of every month, and it's really, really valuable. I Again, I personally read the newsletter to find out what's going on in California and at my own organization. So please do read that newsletter. It's got a lot of funding opportunities. And uh, trust us, if we have a very promising funding opportunity to share with you, you are not going to be able to get rid of us until we know that you have heard about it. So we do the best that we can to get information out. Being on our newsletter is a really great place to start. I also want to call out, what advice do you have, Amy and Melissa, for hospitals that have just gotten started? So one person in the chat says, we just started our program. I don't have that kind of data yet. And I love that they say yet, because that definitely shows me that the intent and the will to do the work is there. They say, I only hope we have time to build up data. We've only been seeing patients for about a month. Yeah, and I think um, it doesn't take long, right? So I really appreciate that you're thinking about this already. Like at the very beginning of your program, you are 10 steps ahead by thinking about this. One of the strategies that we used at UC Davis is we started by focusing our efforts on our patients who caused the most um, angst, stress, for the emergency department. So we went and we talked to the ED charge nurse and the staff of who do you think that we could make a difference in? Who, who is our, you know, we call them our high value targets of people who are really struggling with substance use disorder, who seem not to have a lot of resources and then are causing a lot of angst and stress on your department staff because they don't have resources for that patient. Um, and we actually, made most of our case with one individual who was a high value target for our ED, was known by their first name by everyone in the emergency department staff because of the way that that individual's intoxication withdrawal syndrome sort of manifested in the ED and sort of the behavioral aspects of that. Um, and we focused on that person and that person, we were able to reduce ED utilization by about 60 visits over the course of two months because they were such a high value target. So what I would say is at the beginning is don't wait, talk to the staff. I'm sure they have a list of folks that could really use your help. Focus on those individuals and you will collect really um, important data and important stories and really be able to show everyone the value of your program. Just with one person, you can do it. Yeah, especially at the beginning, never forget, navigators are expert storytellers. That's one of the things that we love about the navigator role. We actually host a internal California Bridge a little presentation every week where we have a navigator from across the state join us and tell us stories. So even if you've just been seeing patients for a couple of weeks, those one of those early patients could become a story that ends up being part of your hospital's sustainability. Yeah. 
Yeah, I just want to emphasize that, you know, that even the tool that we just saw, it's meant to be small and mighty. What Amy is describing, small and mighty. One patient makes a big difference. And at the end of the day, even when, you know, you're using data, I will be the first to say it's about telling a story. I'm the data person saying you are storytelling. It's just a different, you know, different type of building block to get there. Amy, what do you know about inpatient versus outpatient for the CHW code to help our friend Maureen? In, um, okay, Maureen, I would love to chat with you because I would love to talk to hear about your success using the CHW code in the outpatient setting. Um, I'd love to hear if you're using that in the emergency department. I don't believe that sites are billing for CHW work for inpatients yet. Um, I do know of some sites who are billing for screening, brief intervention, and referral to treatment codes on inpatients, but I think we're going to have to be a little bit creative in the way that we look at the options out there to see how we can support this really important work in our hospital. But I'd love to hear about your experience on the CHW code and how that's working, so please shoot us an email because um, we'd love to highlight that work for you. Yeah, so we're closing in on our final moments of this webinar. So any other questions that are coming up, we do have a few minutes to answer them. But Amy, do you want to speak to how individuals within the very big systems should be thinking about this? We have a navigator who's at a very big system saying, I think that the system needs to make a decision about whether they're continuing with the role. So how can I promote the sustainability of my role at one hospital in a giant system? And um, for this particular navigator, I have some good news, which is that I know there's somebody within your system thinking about this at a very high level who is on this webinar. So um, you know who you are. But yeah, yeah. I, I think right. So this is this is the challenge. Every you know every hospital is different. There are large systems. There are small hospitals. Um, but I think your voice is important. So I think navigating you know, large coordinated systems versus individual hospitals, it can look different in terms of who the decision makers are, but every voice is important. So if your supervisor really understands the value of this program and can communicate it up, can communicate it within your hospital, that message does go to the system leaders. And so I think that even large organizations are responsive to their members. So if you wanted to be able to use these tools at your hospital level <laughs> to talk about how you could do this um, and the value of your program at your hospital level, or there's nothing to say that you can't use this at a system level, but really okay. we just wanted to be able to provide you the tools, but recognizing it's going to look different at each hospital, health system, community, county, because our um, healthcare system is very diverse. Hey, Amy, do you have to be a social worker to bill for SBIRT? So SBIRT can be billed by a qualified provider or someone who is trained in SBIRT under the supervision of a qualified provider. So someone who is not a social worker could perform and document an SBIRT, and that could be billed, i.e. co-signed, by someone who is authorized to bill for it, a social worker or a physician. Um, so you can, we have seen a couple hospitals have an arrangement where the navigator who is trained in SBIRT performs the SBIRT, documents it, and then the qualified provider co-signs it as the supervising provider, and they're able to bill it up. Uh, always a challenge with healthcare and a little bit of a workaround, but yes, you can do that. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us live today. Encourage everyone to take the next five minutes before whatever you have going on at the noon hour, take a deep breath, reflect on a patient whose life your work has helped maybe text somebody you love and just know that we are here for you whenever you are ready to use this tool, be it later today, next week, maybe next month. Don't wait longer than that. If you're here still listening to my voice, don't wait later than next month to reach out to us. We're here and we're ready to support you. So thank you all. And I hope you all have a really wonderful rest of your day. Bye.